Hey guys, hey guys, this is Robin. Look how gorgeous Robin is. <laughs> Thank you, Luana. Back at you. Hello, my man. Lu, meu amor. Te amo. It's a Brazilian friend. Actually, she's, actually, she's my, partner, my partner. Business, business partner. partner. All right. People will start joining. Hello. I, I wonder who is. Rashad. Is Rashad Rashad from Mimi? Mimi Rashad? I hope so. But anyway, um, people will start joining our live. And if they don't, they are going to be able to watch um, in the feed. But uh, oh, yes. Hello, baby boy. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Robin, to, um, you know, accept the. Um, that my invitation, my invite to talk a little bit about yoga. I think the world needs yoga <laughs> right now. And so Thank you for inviting right. me. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. So um, I am going just to give you the space to talk about yourself. I know briefly we connected a few years ago when I launched the Healthy Gal. And I absolutely loved, um, and I was just uh, kind of talk, saying a little bit how I, I, you are such an incredible innovator. Um, and uh, I love the way you approach uh, the yoga with yoga flavor. And I was just like, this is so cool. This is so awesome. So, so um, well, please go ahead, talk a little bit more about you and how you started with uh, with the yoga, why you started, and a little bit about yoga flavor. Sure. Um, well, I started, um, I just giggle sometimes when I think about started. First influence of Eastern philosophy, I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx. And in the Bronx, everybody was kung fu fighting. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I had friends who were into karate, and I was very intrigued by it. So that's where my first like um, Eastern philosophy came into play. And then I had a really close girlfriend who was into gymnastics, and I love dance and gymnastics. So very body conscious, loved to move my body, very intrigued by Eastern philosophy. And this was all like the 70s where that first influence, you know, came on to me. And then I went into a whole media career. I don't know if you know, I'm an Emmy Award winner, ABC News, the show 2020. Um, and that came out of me loving the arts and music. And it just happened that my first job in media turned out to be ABC News. And it was an Emmy Award winning show and everything just all aligned in that direction. Um, and this was like pre-computers, you know, just typing, pre-fax machines and everything. So I got trained really well into doing really good research and getting um, information. Um, and then as I got involved in the entertainment industry, news and everything, the stress of all of that started to come onto my body. And I did a lot of really great things, musical coordinator for the Cosby show, unit publicist for films like New Jack City. I work with Spike wow. to do the right thing. Um, and I did my own short film, went out to Hollywood with the filmmaker. And that's where stress really started coming at me because it wasn't flowing as easily as it did early on in my career. My marriage wasn't working as well as I would have liked. And the thing that really shook me mm -hmm. was that my mom um, lost her battle to cancer. Mm. So I knew um, that I really wanted to have the tools to help me cope with stress. This was around 1995, 96. Mom passed away in 98 and I had just started getting into yoga as a tool to help me cope with stress. And um, after my first yoga class, I felt like, okay, this, this, this can help me. So I went on and just started taking advanced classes. And I took a teacher training class, not necessarily because I wanted to teach. I just wanted to get as much information, that news background, right? I wanted to get as much information as knowledge and knowledge as possible.
people to help me, to keep me alive. And um, part of teacher training, you had to take on um, students. And um, my students didn't let me stop after my teacher training was over. And the thing that really kind of connected everything was the fact that um, one of my old time friends, um, Russell Simmons, I ran into Russell. He says, I love yoga. I do yoga. I know there's all controversies with Russell, but Russell is an excellent yogi. Yes. And um, uh, he took a class from me and um, he also took me to a class where there was music and that's where I said, well, if these people are using music, I'm going to use music. And when I went to India, I didn't really have my style defined, but when I went to India, um, the gurus in India said, take the yoga practice and interpret it for your people. Once again, I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx. We got flavor. So wow. <laughs> it's like, wow. I said, if I'm going to interpret it for my people, I got to do it in a way that is really comfortable, that they can understand it. And music had a big part of how I would do my yoga practice to make my students comfortable, put on some familiar music, put music with the theme. It's interesting because everyone now is doing yoga to music, but when I first started, that was a little controversial and oh no music, you need to like be one with your mind and body or whatever. So I was, um, I've actually won an award through the International Association of Black yoga instructors as a trailblazer. I was the first um, African-American woman to have an internationally distributed um, yoga tape, DVD, VHS. Wow. Um, and uh, no one else at the time was doing yoga with music and there were not too many women of color and women of color with curves. I got curves too. That's the other issue, my other uh, flavor uh -huh. that I had going on. So, so all of that came together as yoga flavor. And um, because I was out in Hollywood already, I started getting a lot of Hollywood clients. And um, uh, that was a really nice ride. So um, I did that, and then around 2005, when the there was a big economic shift, 2005, 2008, the recession, mm -hmm. um, my VIP clients were all feeling very safe, and they wanted to cut their budgets, and one of the first things to go was their yoga, private yoga instructor, and um, so at the same time, I started noticing signs that my father might need my help. Um, I still had my apartment in Manhattan. Dad had this big house in Long Island. And I started feeling like maybe it's time to head back east. I did, I did LA for 15 years, um, but then around two, 2008, and it was a slow moving, you know, back to, uh, to the East Coast. Um, and then fast forward to, I'll say 2017, where the reality that my father really needed my help essentially full time. I think both of us were in denial. Like my father's like, oh, I don't need you. And I was like, uh, maybe you don't need me, but maybe you do. Uh -huh. And um, it was kind of a, a little bit of a tug till finally he was hospitalized at the hospital. Uh -huh. Um, after he went to rehabilitation at the rehabilitation center, they were trying to keep him there because they had like a nursing home attached to the rehabilitation center. I'm like, no, he has a house. You know, he has me. We can go. And thank goodness we had all the papers in order. But that was another thing. I saw how nursing homes and there's a whole predatory thing going on with mm. elders, you know, third party people trying to snatch up elders and their assets. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm taking to my daddy home oh, wow. be all right yes and so I took him home and um I had to sneak the yoga on him I couldn't really like and now we're going to do some yoga it was like he likes salsa music so it was like I put on some salsa music and I'm like okay dad let's loosen up your shoulders you know let's you know some yoga flavor right I was like da, 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 yes. da. <laughs> Let's, awesome. let's breathe let's breathe let's move okay now let's be quiet you know and let's just be you know for a little bit all right that was great you know so i just kind of eased him into it 
and he enjoyed it and, he, and it felt good. And then when I, when I would take them to senior centers, they would, they would do some yoga and some things. And some of the senior centers, I would go, you know, and do it with him and kind of see how they were doing it. But of course I would always, you know, come back home and let's add some music and let's do this and, and make it fun and make it fun. And that's what I always wanted my yoga, my yoga flavor to be is fun. Cause I would say, I don't want people stressed out coming to my yoga class, stressed out during the yoga class. I want everyone to feel like they're having a good time. And it was so delightful to be able to cultivate that with my father. That's amazing. Wow. So much. <laughs> so, uh, Guys, if you uh, don't know um, much about yoga flavor, um, in the comments, you're going to, um, Robin, she has a page dedicated to yoga flavor. Uh, you guys should go there and check the page and just get a little bit more. I, I think it is just amazing what she, what, uh, what she created. It's just, it is just really, it, it's just beautiful. And she, uh, I saw that you're creating a documentary, right? Yes, yes, because sure. if you saw everything that I tried to breeze through, of like I have, I have so much footage. Yes. On top of that, my father is an award-winning photographer since the age of 17. Wow. So his whole life is documented. My whole life is documented. So I'm weaving the story. At first I said, let me just do a documentary about the 25 years of yoga flavor. There's enough footage in that. But then being around my father, especially when I take my father to yoga events, he becomes a superstar. That's <laughs> Everybody, everybody's like, who's the guy in the wheelchair who gets out of the wheelchair occasionally and gets wow. on the mat and tries to do the moves who is that man so that he guy. always he always becomes like the celebrity and I'm like okay dad I think you may need to you and I may need to be the poster children of elder care here to show people how we do it um so that's that's been amazing to me I would have never thought that he would have gotten into it as much as he has or even, you know, in public settings that he would get so much involved. He gets more involved sometimes when he sees like everybody's doing it. He'll jump up and, and I won't jump, not something. Sometimes he doesn't jump up. Sometimes he's just in his chair. I don't know if you saw the latest post that I had of him on the Yoga Flavor page. Because yeah. there's all these ladies in front of him. And dad's just like, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. This could work. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. But it's just a, a, it's it's you're basically breaking a few uh, beliefs that people have. One that uh, a lot of people believe that yoga has to be it is something boring, right? That you just hold the poses for I don't know how long and you just change and people think that it's just um, uh, too much uh, to the spiritual side. Um, and uh, we are just trying to create, I, I think people are just really, and it's just beautiful you, what you said about your experience in India. Uh, the guru told you just like, you know, show yoga the way, can you say that, the, the phrase again? Because that um, was- oh, Yes, um, take the practice uh -huh. and interpret it for your people. That's, My people that's got beautiful. flavor. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Because, you, you know, we, we really have it. It's a little bit of neuro-linguistic because once you understand the brain, it's just like it is how people welcome themselves to, yes. um, to a new belief, yes. right? And yes. uh, returning to your father, that's just beautiful because the, the, you started very simple and in basic things like breeding, like just moving a little bit, right? So a lot of people think that just like yoga, you're just going to start right away, like very hard and doing all those um, very hard poses. But you, the introduction was first this, then go the second. I think it is just bringing back to the basics. Totally. Just Totally. My, my Even before Yoga Flavor, the first brand I, I tried to establish was called Rachaka Yoga. And Rachaka in East Indian Sanskrit means to exhale. So it was my little answer to waiting to exhale. My first DVD was um, Yoga for Relaxation. So I, I started out specializing in guided relaxation, guided 
meditation because once you're relaxed, then you can get into all of the yeah. you know, movement a lot easier, but you got to relax. And a lot of people have forgotten to relax. A lot of people, especially with COVID going on, yeah. um, are even fearful of relaxing. If I relax, if I relax, I may not, I may miss something. I may not pay yeah. attention. I may let my guard down. So um, relaxing is something that needs to continually be cultivated, especially in the era that we're in. Yes. And uh, anxiety, it's, uh, it's totally linked to you holding your breath right mm -hmm. yes so uh i think that's just um i, I for all the uh yog yogis i've been talking just like respiration and the breathing pattern it is it is yoga i think it's because yes. you're just and, centering your girlfriend and with that being it, it, and i'm sorry but i just felt a moment like no, with please. that being said what i always like to do is give everybody a moment here Let's inhale, lengthen our spine, right. Exhale, drop the shoulders. Yes, I love that. Inhale through your nose, let the belly swell like a balloon. Exhale, pull the belly button back towards the spine and up towards the heart. One more time, inhale through the nose. Exhale, let go of everything that doesn't serve you. All right, continue. There we go, yes, <laughs> this is amazing. This is yoga. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. All right, so uh, we we um, we spoke about yoga flavor. I want to uh, just to learn a little bit um, from you. How we can use you, you? You mentioned the pandemic and all the stress and everything that the world is going through at this moment. Um, a lot of people are dealing with grief. A lot of people lost. You know the love people um a lot of people they're unfortunately they are being forced to be separated by the family especially the ones uh the elderly um they are in nursery homes and family cannot go and visit um so i think i just believe that it's extremely hard to not be able to hug you know your mother your father and a mother and a father to not receive that love because they think that is the glue of uh, life, right? Um, so how yoga help us in not only to cope with all the stress, you kind of used that a little bit, but uh, um, I would love to hear your perspective about um, the brain science and also how yoga can help us to boost or to improve our immune system. Because the moment you have a stronger immune system, then you'll kind of, you're going to any infection your your body uh you know have the contact that any um invader your body will will have the ability to defend itself a little bit better so uh i would love to hear uh your opinion about this two perspectives sure like 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 any other discipline any other practice it's putting in the work or the play, right? To 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 build that muscle, be it a spiritual muscle, be it a lung muscle, um, but to put in the work to do that. And like I said, I teeter on the word work because sometimes I I encourage it being a joyful. Put the energy towards it, right? Put the energy. So take the time in the morning um, to as you were just saying, to center yourself. You know, there's so many things you can be worried about, but if you just jump up and just get into all the worry, you know, you stay in that frenetic frequency all day. But if you allow yourself to get up, to breathe deeply, allowing the breath to nourish you, and a lot of us breathe using the upper breathing cavity to bring the breath down into the lower deep diaphragmatic breathing is where we get our nourishment. Sometimes anxiety is caused because we're not breathing all the way and we're just breathing up here. Mm -hmm. So breathing deep and allowing and, and being mindful how the breath nourishes you, being mindful to take in the oxygen being mindful, and yoga means union. 
It's a sense of union with your mind, with your body, with your breath, and with your spirit. So cultivating that sense of union within yourself. And then when you feel centered, then you can give from the overflow. Once you fill yourself up, then you can give from the overflow and address whatever issues are going on. Yes, once again, my heart goes out to the elderly that are in the nursing homes and you know their loved ones can't go to see them. And so whatever it is that you need to do to stay strong for that loved one that is in a facility and is really challenging is part of the um, relief and help that you could give to someone who's in that situation. And also I want to say what's happening with me as I look at my father is utilizing all these tools to prepare myself for my elderly years. You know, and I have to give a lot of credit to my father for all the preparation that he put in so that he could be comfortable at this time of his life. So I always say that we're a good team. So you want to make yourself as well as possible putting wellness as a priority. Yoga means union, mind, body, breath, and spirit. And then once again, take that and see if you can partner with your loved one, with your family. So as a team, you all could, we all, and then the world, right? The intimate circle and then the world so that we all could move forward in a healthy environment where all these tools help to um, strengthen our immunity and um, shine a positive light on the world. Awesome, that's amazing. Uh, I wanna just to uh, talk a little bit more about, you, you tapped um, in, in how you initiated this work about uh, involving oh, no, yoga, yoga and the tra and the and training, and not training, not uh, but helping your, your father, assisting your father. Um, the technical part, now just like really talking about instructor to instructor. Um, how did you structure the, uh, the training with him? Because it is, the, the, when we talk about the physical, it is, it is a training on uh, how how was this, um, was this um, development? Well, development. well um, uh, the first couple of times when I'm thinking about it now, it was just in his bed. You know, before he even got out of bed, that we, you know, when I first had to help him rescue him, I before he got out of bed, bed, he's in his bed. And you know, he'd be on his bed and you know, like just some gentle stretches with the leg, you know, whatever, just the arm. Hey, lift your arms up and over, do a total body stretch, okay? So the hands on, right, in the bed, a familiar environment, they don't feel, they're not in a gym with loud stuff and either, no, so in the bed, some gentle, stretching and yoga sometimes they call it thai yoga massage and um, once again i always talk about the music with the elderly sometimes the music from their youth takes them back to a youthful time where they forget they're in an old body you know wow so, that's yes, amazing yes yes that's great that's great and you got that you got a huge one from that one too so you know so i think you know you were talking about one of your family members who's elderly, you know, what music did she listen to, you know, in her youth, in her 20s, in her 30s, when she was vibrant, mm -hmm. you know, put that on and you may be surprised that she might want to, you know, get up and dance every day, you know, when, when it's time for dad to take a shower, salsa music is blasting, yeah. and, you know, that gets him like up and going and we cha-cha-cha to, the, you know, to yes. go in, yes. into the shower. Yes. So familiar environments, familiar music, you know, you know the technical moves, but for them, once again, you got to interpret it for them in their familiar environment. Okay, so chair yoga, yoga in the bed, restorative stuff I would do, you know, um, to stretch out his back if he's hunched over all the time, putting a pillow and a gentle back bend just while he's on the bed to stretch out the back. 
and, and it's just laying there. It's not really moving. It's like, Dad, let me put this here under your back. You just lay back, listen to Tito Puente, and, you know, <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> and then we'll get up, and then his back is stretched. You know, yeah. I, I also have scheduled, you know, not everybody can do it, but I've, I scheduled professional massages for him and uh, physical therapy. So I was that person. And I know not all caregivers will do that, but I was that person. You know, what, what benefits do you have? You get physical, be you know, physical training, you know, so let's, let's do that. Let's get all your benefits. And then, okay, you did really well with that, but I think you could still use a massage. I'm sorry, it's not under your insurance, but I think you could use it. So let's go get a professional massage. Yeah. But, but like you said, for, for just starting out, the technical thing is to meet them where they are, put them in familiar environments, make them feel comfortable with music and whatever, their favorite chair or, their, or laying down in bed. And then if they can't move themselves, you start, oh, let's see what it's like to move your arm like this. Oh, great. And yeah. after you do that after a while, they'll do it on their own. And and they'll get more into it. And then, and then if you put them in an environment where there is a group of people who challenge themselves, I was surprised it wasn't even old people. I took him to a yoga event and I didn't know how he would do. I thought he would just sit there in the wheelchair, but he saw everybody moving. And it I made me like, beautiful. oh, let me see if I can beautiful. do this. Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful, it, it was, beautiful. was beautiful. And I love that, uh, um, I do have my training and I do have a specific client that I use a lot music of their time. Why? Because I want to create this distraction. They're doing the physical work, physical work but they but have, they to, have forget to forget the pain, the pain they're, they're going, going through. through. So we, I, I love this. I absolutely love this. And the restorative um, is, work, um, work is, putting the, uh, the, lens the lens to work, to work the way, the way they're, supposed they're supposed to work, to work. restoring the motion, the yeah. range of motion, right? I think it's just perfect what you mentioned about working with the pillow because uh, we have the foam rollers, but the yes. pillow is just perfect because everybody yes. have a pillow. So you're just putting, you're yes. opening yes. your, your uh, rib cage, your thoracic box, box. So you're just, just helping, helping your lungs to expand, to expand, right? You're allowing the body just with the with the blood flow so, so the tissues the are tissues getting the oxygenated, oxygenated um blood you're getting uh, the nourishment the from from the food and sometimes the muscles are not getting uh the micronutrients necessary to move necessary because to move there's because not there's efficient, not efficient blood, blood flow blood in that in certain, certain body parts, parts. and uh it's just beautiful that you're just focusing small restorative range of, motion, range of motion you know just very you know, just guys very, just guys very just simple, simple you know, you know um, we just have, to, have respect to respect how the, works how the body works and just works go with it you know but at a you know, level what you're doing with the music with the because we forget about the body, body and we are here and we are but you you forget about the body but you're not um neglecting the body you're still moving you're still connecting with the body but you're connecting in in a much deeper level because sometimes um people they fear move because um i do have some, uh, a few people that just like do this it is extremely painful but because they are dancing that is not a workout <laughs> but they're doing <laughs> they're lifting the arms above their head you know they're doing a no, chill press and we don't know what they're doing. They're dancing. They're dancing. So I absolutely love, and that is the yoga flavor, and that is just the that whole beauty. The whole uh, beauty. I just get really excited about because my background, uh, it's ballet. My first, my first degree was ballet, it's classical ballet. And, um, and it's a beautiful um, art too. It's a beautiful art and too. I like to implement like a few movements with the workout, and I think that is just... Um, um, brilliant. Uh, just allowing the body just to flow and the music is everything. It's everything. Very, um, very uh, um, suspect to talk about music because my husband, the, uh, family, it's all about music, right? 
um, but music has a, such a deep and talking about the um, very I have a lot of respect for the healing powers of music. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Oh, uh, yes, yes. And the memory, um, super just like work with a playlist, guys. Work with a playlist that actually brings um, memory, good memory, not the, the breakup. <laughs> Those breakups don't those don't don't go with no, no. Let's just work it. This is perfect. Work. Thank, you so Thank you so much for sharing this um, because simple things, um, are, things um, are what makes the, the difference in everything. In everything. Uh, uh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, talking about the connection, uh, you develop. I think you dip. You started creating this in-depth connection with your father because that is the moment you guys are um, doing a yoga, practicing, moving the body. But the care—it's—I um, think it is just a um, powerful, super powerful. You're you're getting to know um, your father in a level that you don't need spoken words. Yes, and I lovingly call my father Sergeant Major because he's a military man. And that's where um, a lot of the uh, resistance I had to, you know, I guess pamper, pacify, calm down. Um, he, a military man, a teacher at an all boys high school in Brooklyn. You know, he had these daughters, but he also had this really, really tough side. I, I, I'm speaking like it past tense. No, Sergeant Major definitely comes through, but I think he has allowed me to nurture his softer side. And, um, and I love that at every meal, when we say grace and he thanks the Lord for his food, he also looks me in my eyes and says, thank you for all you do and for being with me at every meal so that appreciation is amazing yeah you're just responding to the body language because the body speaks more sometimes in the words and, and this, it's just this, this once, once again, again last week more mm. last week more yes. so i want um uh, just to ask you, what is your message for people that kind of have a little resistance? Um, that kind of have I a little resistance. Um, I see that all the time. I see that all the time. Daughters and sons that do not want to, to reconnect, reconnect with their, with their parents, parents because parents. Um, they are stuck in maybe in a trauma or huh? in the ways that the father or the mother or, was. Yeah. Or the I mean, was, that well, well, letting that go thing is just blocking, just the, blocking growth the growth of the relationship. Okay, well, that's why I say I lovingly call my father Sergeant Major because sometimes you may need to have split personalities. You may have, you know, like he could be daddy, you know, but then when he knows when I am giving him the ultimate respect and speaking at a a respect level is when I will say, Sergeant Major, this is what needs to happen. Um, or this is what I suggest, because I don't like to force anything. This is what I suggest. So it may be having different personalities at different times. Know when to be the loving daughter and know when to be the caring adult is what I'm finding. I never, I mean, early on when I think when everybody was trying to deal with my father, when he first came to his house and we were putting people to help him, he would get so mad. Don't speak to me like a child, you know, and, and that is something that when those dynamics start to change, you have to always remember no matter what, this is your parent. So that level of respect and I think that might be a lost art these days, you know, respecting your elders, respecting your elders. So in respecting your elders, there's a bit of humility that one needs to take on. And I think a lot of people or children, you know, who have to care for their parents have a hard time with that humility. 
because they're frustrated and they want it to be this way and it should be this way and da, 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 da. But then they have to remember that this person has lived a, a long life. They may not remember everything, but let's have a little humility. Let's have a little respect for our elders. So I think that's on the caregiver to take on that humility, to take on that level of respect. And if you as a caregiver cannot bring yourself to that place, then those are the caregivers that may not be meant to do the job. Like for real. Yes. yes like for yes, real. True. Mm -hmm. sure. yes. yes. So coming to terms with that, um, I didn't know. I didn't know if I would be able to do it. Um, there were definitely times where I literally walked away. He was he was in that facility and he was talking crazy, like they're in my home and they're doing renovations I didn't approve of. And I'm like, what? We, we talked about this. And then I was just like, okay, I can't deal. I'm, I'm going to leave now. Yeah. And I left and I had to, you know, just get paperwork in order, get my mind in order. And then when I walked back in there, grabbed my father, we got out of there. But uh, it's, it's, it, it's a job and it's like parenthood is a job. And if you, you know, respect the job your parents did of raising you and you could return that fine, but I could see where it's not for everybody and, and why force something that's not for everybody. And that's where you look for, you know, a paid a caregiver they have you know those people who will come into the home and they have facilities it may but, but you know I think there's nothing like um, being able to be there for the person who raised you that's where I am beautiful I it, 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 are you developing uh, an online course for uh, yoga instructors to learn this no for real because it is yeah. extremely necessary. And as you said, yeah, there are a few people that they are not patient or they don't understand and they don't know. They, they that's know why they, people that's hire why people personal hire trainers, trainers because, because or right. they go they to take a, a class, class because, because there we go. A professional, there go, a professional right there teaching right there, and teaching doing and the uh, doing giving the right instruction. To, to and, and what and what I'm what I'm doing the main thing I'm doing is interesting you're saying it for yoga instructors what I'm really focusing on is that person who wants to be a caregiver but like you said has that resistance but they want to break through they want to know how to have humility and they want to know how to have respect and they want to know how to take care of themselves so that they're strong enough to take care of their loved ones so the course that I'm developing is for the caregiver not so much the yoga instructor it's interesting you say that I guess I could do something for the yoga instructor but I feel so much for caregivers because caregivers um sometimes don't set out to be caregivers you know my father was living with a woman who was a nurse i just knew she would be taking care of him but she passed away you know they separated and then she passed away not too long ago so for the adult child who finds that their parent you know can no longer function um as they used to and they realize that that parent needs help but they're not sure 